It's been a while, right? Since I sat down, spoke about makeup, even did makeup myself. And I feel like a lot of people almost lost, not lost the spark, but the world the way that it is, it's kind of like getting excited about makeup. Like, why? Because who's gonna see my face? But you know what? It's time to manifest. It's time to manifest, get excited again. We have lockdown eased and release dates, right? Cross they will stay. Pause, pause, babes, come on. Any little bit of hope is enough, and that to me is enough to make me, you know what, prep my June 21st face. This makeup look is exactly what I'm gonna be wearing very soon. And I'm not even just talking about June 21st, even when like the pub gardens start opening, or it's like a real just pretty soft glam. Nothing hard to do, but glam enough that I put on a full face and um feel better about myself. Okay. Some sick products as well, okay, stuff that I swear. I swear you need to know about. If you love makeup or loved makeup and want to find that passion again, now is the time. Use this as inspiration, okay? Do it. You want to know how I did this? This is actually almost my everyday face. I just don't wear lashes. So if you want to know what I've been wearing at the moment, my go-to, a look that won't fail me and a look that I'll be putting out a lot. You know what to do. You know what to do, okay? Wow, this coffee is needed right now. What's the time? Seven in the morning. <laughs> Caffeine, enter. Oops. <laughs> it's funny because I act like caffeine actually makes a difference to me. It don't. I don't get the buzz. I wish I did. When people get that coffee high, listen. I want what you're having, to be honest. Skincare and skin prep, for the most part, I have already done. I've cleansed, toned, all of that. I am, though, just going to pop on a little bit of moisturizer. This is the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream. It's the perfect consistency. It's almost thicker, but as soon as you start blending it out, it goes a bit thinner, and I feel like it's dead hydrating too. Baby, I don't care what skin type you have, always moisturize. And this is a good one. From the drugstore too. You probably know by now, but the first thing I always love to do is my eyebrows, and I literally do the same routine. Maybe the products are a little bit different in terms of filling them in, but the actual concept is exactly the same. I still use the short scoffed got to be glue. Some people were saying that their hair started to fall out with this. Like, the f- on a personal level, I can safely say I have never experienced that. Otherwise, I still wouldn't be using it. Just remove it properly, guys. And if you're struggling, use like an oil cleanser or something to break down the product. I'm not being responsible for anything. Okay. I use this. It works for me. And it's my go-to. It's my absolute favorite. My eyebrows do not move. And you get that feather, fluffy brow look the easiest and the cheapest because this literally lasts me a lifetime. Grab a little bit on a spoolie. Start to work that through. God, I need to pluck my eyebrows. Baby, she's been neglected <laughs> the thing is right being in lockdown and stuff i don't know just certain things like that are not a priority who the hell is gonna see my ugly ass eyebrows no one i'll run through this quick by the way because i feel like i've done this before but then at the same time i've seen a lot of people ask for it too so this is for the people that's not seen it this part is literally a game of i guess patience in terms of getting the hairs exactly where you want them it does dry reasonably quick though so you don't want to like hang about too much but i now take my finger and I just push against my skin to make sure that the hairs are as flat as possible. This will also take off any excess product as well that we don't need. Let me zoom you in for a second, just so you can really see what I'm doing here. If this is your thing, cool, that looks fucking crazy, but <laughs> top of the spoolie, run it across and then tame the end. That way they have more shape to them, but they still have that fluff. I'm gonna just speed this process up. <laughs> Grab a baby wipe, you guys, or any kind of makeup wipe. You wanna go round your eyebrow and remove any excess glue that's on your skin. This is pretty important because otherwise you end up with like crustiness almost. You know when the glue almost starts to kind of flake off and you get those little white specks? This is pretty important to kind of like avoid that. Grabbing my concealer now, this is what I'm gonna use to carve out my eyebrow. Using a ColourPop E24 brush. It's like a flat sort of paddle brush, which will be perfect for underneath here. This as well is another important step. This is where I'm creating the shape that I want. I can actually see everywhere that needs filling in now. So I'm not gonna fill in any spaces that don't need it. While I'm here, I always just kind of prime my eyelids as well. I typically, a lot of the time do my eyes first anyway, so. Blend that out. Two of my favorite eyebrow products, and I flip between the both when I do my eyebrows because they do different things. The NYX Micro Brow Pencil, this is in Ash Brown. I don't like to go too dark, even though my head's black. Base color, I want to be a little bit lighter, and then I add in details with the misguided brow you doing tinted brow marker. Ever since using this, game changer. NYX Pencil to start. Go in and I look for any sparse areas, so if there's any parts underneath. I like to add on a bit of a tail as well and fill in this area too. I feel like this adds a lot of fullness. At the top a little bit. Nothing too crazy though, because I don't want it to look like a line. I still want it to have that feathery look, but a little bit through the front. And I'm flicking, I don't know if you can tell. That way you get that sort of hair-like stroke as opposed to anything too harsh or 
filled in. Then move over to your brow marker. This is in the shade dark, by the way, which is darker than that pencil I just used. Although I probably would shade down with this, but this is the one that I have. Typically stick with this at the end of my eyebrow. Literally add mini hairs with this. Look at that. The best thing, look. Can you see the little like hairs? When I use this to apply a really light pressure and look at that. Love it. See that difference? They're a similar shape because of the concealer, but this one is just a lot more fuller. So easy to do as well. I'm not fannying around with like a million different things and they're my fave. Okay. Okay. If I'm going to put on eye makeup, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Every day, I basically do a more like chill version of this, meaning I don't put on lashes, just mascara, and then like the wing shape, I typically kind of just do like a small wing as opposed to like blurring out. Palette wise, there's a few that I kind of go between and love. It just depends on the day to be fair. First one being this ColourPop Wild Child palette which is beautiful. It's got like a nice sort of warm toned brown color story to it. And I'll use like the mattes in there. These e.l.f. palettes are beautiful. These are their bite sized eyeshadows. So it comes with four shades. This one in Truffles, really, really lovely. I use this one quite a lot to be fair. Or this one from Maven Beauty. I think this is Fashion Nova's makeup brand. Quad eyeshadow palette in basic beat medium blend. They look quite similar in the pan, but I promise on the skin, they do come up differently. These have got like nice transitional colors in. When you want a little like but not too much, you know? I'm gonna use this little elf one. I'm gonna take this sort of medium brown shade here first. Press that right into the outer corner to begin with, and then start to blend it round into the crease. Little circular motions, really focusing on getting that blended and soft. My favorite shape is winged out, so I'm just gonna bring that back more towards my temple. I add a little bit as I go, by the way. I don't like anything too like mad. Softly blend it up towards my brow bone, but I like to keep it quite low because I like that more winged out shape because the more you take up towards your brow i feel like the more rounded it looks and i like that more wing effect so i keep it kind of low a little bit more i add a little bit by a little bit by the way i don't like anything too crazy straight away these are pretty pigmented so i just dab in really carefully and don't worry about it being messy because we will clean this line up after once you're happy with the blend you should have something that looks like this you can see i've got that nice blurred out wing shape quickly do this eye <laughs> Whack it on, babes. This brush, by the way, it's the ColourPop E22. I love it because it's like a tapered, fluffy brush. So the point allows me to get the shape that I want, but it's obviously fluffy so you can blend. My fave for this kind of look. I feel like it gives you a nice controlled blend. An angled brush now. This is the ColourPop E30, but just anything that gives you that nice, thin, precise line. Dipping into the brown, we're gonna create our wing. So all that I do is I create a line at the bottom. I imagine that my lower lash line is extending and that's how I know the angle to get. I sort of tilt my head back and then picture it extending and that's what we get. Now going into my eye about a third, that's where I'm gonna start this line. So about here and just bring, bring it out and start to fill it in. This doesn't have to be perfect at all. It's just gonna give you that rough guide. Then what I like to do is bring it into the inner corner, but this has to be like real thin. So I only like the thickness to be on the outer part of my eye. From here onwards, you wanna make it as thin as you possibly can. That's why you need like a nice thin angled brush so you can do that. And I almost like press the eyeshadow into my lash line. The inner corner part, how am I gonna explain this? This line here, I almost like it to look like a straight line. So instead of going like the eye shape and then the wing, I like it to be more level and then wing out at the end. So I tilt my head back and the inner corner, instead of following my eye shape in, I keep it nice and flat. So I'm almost not following my lash line in the inner corner. I bring it towards my nose. See how it's like flat? You know what I mean? Do 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 you know what I like my wing to be a little bit more blended than this, so I take a pencil brush. I kind of just dabble in and mix the two shades together that we've used in here, and just kind of go back and forth and blur it out. Back in with our fluffy brush and blend. And this way it just gives it like a more softer appearance. It's like a wing that has no point. It just blends like, you know, going back in with my concealer now, I'm gonna clean up this edge. You could do it with a wipe, to be fair. I kind of like a concealer because I go in with concealer anyway, so it all kind of blurs in. A little bit of mascara now. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Sky High, the Lash Sensational Sky High. We've all heard about this, okay? Shit bangs. My lashes, a nice coat of this. If it's just every day and I'm doing just mascara, no lashes, I'll focus the majority of the product and kind of focus combing it through on the outer part, like right here, just so we can get them nice and coated and sort of winged out. But today I'm gonna to put on some lashes, I think. Speaking of lashes, um, I kind of switch it up all the time. 
to be fair. This pair though, I feel like it just hits different. I feel like it's the perfect everyday lash. It's like not too much, but it still gives me what I want. Unicorn Cosmetics in Apple Sours. Can you see how it's got a real nice sort of wing to it? A little bit shorter, thicker, has a bit more volume, but they are winged out, so it will complement this eye look perfectly. Fresh pair. Fun fact, actually, I don't like a fresh pair of lashes. I feel like lashes look better when they're like... You've worn them when they're a little bit crusty. Do you know what I mean? These ones are wicked too, because I don't even have to trim these. Lash glue, little thin layer. This is the Duo Black Lash Glue. I like it because it comes in like a wand applicator. The squeezy tubes just annoy the shit out of me. Yes, I'm back to Duo. And yes, I'm slightly allergic to it. It's fine. Just can't find one that's better. And at the end of the day, why fix something that isn't broke? Yes, I may wake up with puffy eyes and a sore lash line sometimes, but it is what it is. Beauty is pain. <laughs> I just love these lashes. They are so yummy. And there you have it. It's like an easy, soft glam eye look. Super simple to do. Doesn't take too long either. Browns blended out in like a wing shape with some nice blown out lashes. And that is it. First step, I like to prime just to kind of prep the skin even more. Two primers I've been loving. One's more of like a gripping one and the other does that more smoothing filling in effect. First one being the M Decay All Nighter Face Primer. This shit grips. Consistency is beautiful. It feels real smooth when it goes on and you can tell it kind of has that tack, which is nice too. Grab a little bit of that and then apply it all over. I personally like to go all over. That way I feel like everywhere is gripped. <laughs> Primers are like a weird thing, right? Sometimes I think, do they do anything and are they more gimmicky or I don't know. But I like these two to be fair. The more you rub it in, you'll notice it kind of has that like tack to it. The next one, classic, the Elf Putty Primer. We all, <laughs> literally everyone in their mums use this. It is the dog's bollocks, all right. <laughs> we stick to the T-zone with this one though. Anywhere like porous and I don't want to like rub because I don't want to disturb the all-nighter. I literally just kind of like press it into my skin. I prefer pressing anywhere for like I'm like pressing it into my pores. A little bit on my chin. I'm also gonna put some on my forehead as well because wrinkles. Am I excited about this foundation? Yes, I am. And you've probably seen it everywhere because everybody's been talking about it. Now listen, when something gets hyped up, I kind of always step back and think like, is this worth the hype? Because too many people are talking about it and sometimes you, you automatically have an opinion on a product before you've even tried it, right? But the hype on this man, I get it. I get it. The Kat Von D Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm. Now, when I first heard balm, I was like, hell no. This bitch has oily skin and that combination literally makes me want to vom. Like, vom comes out my esophagus and I'm just not here for it. I can just picture my foundation literally like melting off my skin. Like the oils, right? I'm not about to sit here and say that my skin doesn't get oily with this. If you have oily skin, it will, but a little bit of touching up and it still looks beautiful. And the way that this covers, insane. And just the way that it looks on the skin is so nice that I still will use it. I just need to touch up maybe a little bit more than I do normally. Good Apple foundation. I'm in the color medium 003, by the way. Doesn't look like you get a lot in here, but I promise a little bit goes a long way. Now, obviously this is more of like a higher end foundation, right? So if you're not about that life, let me put you on. Okay, the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. Color correcting, full coverage, natural finish. Has good skin ingredients in, like collagen peptides, niacinamide. There's even sunscreen in here. This, ignore the fact it says CC Cream. Don't be put off by that. It still has coverage, still lasts, and it still looks beautiful on the skin. So this is another good alternative. Sometimes I get a little bit crazy and I mix them. It really just depends on my mood, what I'm feeling. I might even do that today. Personally, my favorite way to apply this is with a brush, and then I go over the top with my beauty blender just to kind of smooth everything out. I'm using the Fenty Beauty foundation brush. Literally, just dab in a few times. Even that is a lot. Watch this. Do we see that? Tiny bit. Like, look at that coverage. That is crazy. It evens everything out. It will dry down a little bit, but as you can see, it does have a nice finish to it as well. And it doesn't, my favorite thing, it doesn't feel heavy. Too many times have I tried a foundation that just feels like <clears throat> on my skin. This full coverage I'm talking about. It literally covers my mistakes, my flaws, my life choices. I think if you have dry skin, you'll absolutely love this or like drier, more normal skin. I mean, I have oily and I love it, but I'm just talking about the way that it will last on your skin. I love both of these foundations though, whether it's this or the Kat Von D. They're both beautiful, but these are just the ones I've been loving at the moment. Although I have a little trick. This is what I do when I want my makeup to last a longer time and also just kind of keep up better. Take a setting spray. This one is the Cinema Secrets Super Sealer Mattifying Setting Spray. I really like this. I prefer more of a matte one at this stage just because what I'm about to do. Think about your skin type though and what you like. Um, there's a lot of just like normal makeup setting sprays out there, right? Give it a little shake and then I spray half of my face onto the wet foundation like that. Take my beauty blender and just start to press that into the foundation. That way we're marrying the two products together, but also picking up any excess foundation, product that we don't need on our skin, evening everything out. Give it a second to sit so that you're not 
picking up the setting spray, if that makes sense. Now, not only have we gone in and pressed everything into our skin so it sits even better, but we've made it last longer. Genius. <laughs> right. Concealer. This is the concealer I've been loving at the moment, the Cover FX Power Play Concealer. <clears throat> G Light 2 is the colour that I use. This is a bit lighter, but I like to conceal and highlight at the same time. In a corner, down the sides of the nose, up here. This will help to lift when we blend it out. Chin, a little bit on the cupid's bow down the center of the nose and at the forehead. Now, of course, be more specific with where you put yours. Highlighting will bring points out. So obviously if you don't wanna bring your chin out or bring an area of your forehead out, skip that step, don't do that. Me personally, I kind of like everywhere to kind of be brought out a little bit. Kind of works for my face shape, but whatever you wanna do with your face because makeup can help to sculpt and shape. So use it to your advantage. Then I'm gonna use my beauty blender to blend everything in. Concealer as well just almost helps to like color correct everything too. You know if like your foundation matches a little bit off, once you put concealer on I feel like everything is just like better. <laughs> Another step that I can't live without is cream contour and I'm using the same product that I literally always use. <laughs> but this is the My Perfect Color Foundation and Contour Stick. This is in chai. I either use chai or caramel. I kind of flip between the two. The tone of this is a little bit more like yellowy I would say as opposed to that like warm tone. It's still warm but compared to caramel it's a little bit more chill. Um, and I just pop this. I almost put it like above my cheekbones because when you start blending it out, naturally, I mean, you want to blend and keep it up high, but naturally it will lower a little bit. And I'm just going to pop a little bit on my forehead for some color. And I put some here because I like my chin to be lifted a bit. So you can see that will kind of cut off my chin at the bottom a little bit there. Using the Zoeva 102 Silk Finish Brush, this is one of my favorites. I'm just going to start to pat that in. And I prefer to pat, so obviously I don't disturb any product underneath. Can you see that already? How much sort of more flat my chin looks. One of my favorite things about this product is it's so easy to blend and I feel like it adds color but sculpts at the same time. It kind of does two in one. And where it's cream, I feel like it just looks a lot more natural. I still go with a bit of powder bronzer, but for the most part, this is what I use. Like, do you just see how easy that is? I kind of blend down like this and then it's almost like a triangle. Do you know what I mean? Like it's thicker here and then it goes to like a thinner point here and I find that the most kind of complimenting for my face shape. Keep patting, keep blending, do what you gotta do. Let me pick up a little bit of product and add this down my nose. Again, I can't not nose contour, you know? I don't hate my nose, but it's just one of those things that now, now that I've learned to kind of give it some shape, I don't know, I just, it is what it is. Blend it up into my brow as well. That way there's no harsh line. It doesn't just look like two lines on the side of your nose. And then I take a little bit more and add it to the tip. I like my tip. <laughs> tip. <laughs> All right, Jordan. It's 23 now. Stop it. I want it to be almost lifted. So you kind of add like a shadow here. Go over everything with my sponge. I feel like the sponge is the thing that just brings everything together, creates no harsh lines and gets the best blend possible. Powder always. This I've been loving. Laura Mercier translucent, but this is translucent honey. So it has more of like a yellowy undertone. So if you do have more of like a tanner complexion, this is the perfect one. Still love translucent, but I like the tone of this on my skin even better. Pick some up on my damp sponge. It looks quite yellowy and dark in there, but on the skin, it doesn't always translate as that. Press the product into the skin. I always do this for the T-zone of my skin, go down the side of my nose and I leave down the side of my nose just so that can help sculpt. But everywhere else, I press the product in and I don't bake. Press it in. Pressing it in with a damp sponge just takes away any powderiness. It doesn't give that powder veil on your skin. I feel like it just melts it in. It looks like it's meant to be there. I'm also just gonna do a little something something here too as well. I don't let these sit for too long by the way. But sweet, T-zone is done. And then the rest of my skin, I like to go in with a pressed powder. Um, and RCMA have a pressed powder, which you guys know is one of my favorite powders. This is convenient, this. The normal RCMA comes in like a big tub. No color, it's translucent. So it's not gonna adapt or change our skin tone. It's just gonna set. Grab a little bit. Oh, by the way, I always get questions on this brush. It's by Hourglass. It's just like their dual ended brush. Now it is a little bit pricey, but I will say this, okay? I don't think you need to spend a lot on brushes, but this brush, I don't put it down. This I use every single time I do my makeup. And baby, normally I hate double-sided brushes. They're a pain in the ass to store and I just think like, ugh. But this, get it, get it, get it. It's worth investing in, I promise. I use the big side to kind of just set the majority of my face like this. Flip it around, use this end to almost just like dust everything off and I get down the sides of my eyebrow, underneath my eye. It's just the best. 
Honestly, it's my favorite powder brush. And once you have this, I feel like you don't need any other powder brush, honestly. A little bit of powder bronzer now. I know we have a bit of color, but this just adds like a little extra something. Two I go between is either the Fenty Beauty bronzer. This is in Private Island. Or my Milani Soleil bronzer, which I think I'm going to use today. This one has almost like a shimmer through it really subtly so it adds that sort of like sun-kissed glow to your skin which i love on a morphe m527 my favorite bronzer brush just get that on just layer where you've been and apply light pressure and just really blend it out take a little bit under my chin start back here and then i blend it in and up that way obviously the majority of the product starts here and then you can just sort of buff as you go a little bit on the full head and a little bit on the tip of the nose which, by the way, the powder I've not dusted off yet, don't worry. <laughs> blush, of course, always. I could not do my makeup routine without blush. This is Wicked. This is the e.l.f. Putty Blush. Um, I'm not sure what colour this is in. It's the more orangey, peachy toned one. I'll leave it below anyway. Same consistency as the primer. It's got that sort of cream type of finish, but it almost dries down. So you can put it safely on top of your powders and stuff and it won't affect it. Colourpop F31 brush, which I love because it's a bit more compact. My blush, I always focus more on my cheekbones rather than right here that way you're going to get that lift but again do what suits your face and your complexion but by putting it more here i feel like it complements your bronzer too and you get that nice lift how beautiful is that color it's almost like subtle when you get build up time with this which with blush i feel like is really important you don't want something that you put on and just it's like pfft. honestly the putty range from elf is just so good i think it's one of their best ranges that they've done i'm also just going to put some on the bridge of my nose too and then just sort of blend it in with my finger. I feel like it looks really crazy on camera, but in real life it doesn't. I don't really know what's going on there, but I promise it doesn't look mental. Okay, <laughs> highlighter. I just like a little bit to kind of like pop the cheekbone a bit. I kind of put it in one specific area as opposed to like all over my cheekbone. This product, I think it's like three pounds. Three, four pounds, something like that. Beauty Bay highlighter in Beam, which is a real nice sort of that typical kind of champagne color, which we all gravitate towards. That'll be my mum, one second. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Dab in. You don't need a lot of this, by the way, because she's pigmented. I personally like to focus it right here. So I don't like to blend it out all over my cheekbone. I don't like it back here or kind of on the apple. I prefer it more right here. And I kind of press it in just like that. Don't you see that? Crazy. I swear this pan will literally last me a lifetime because it just goes on for days. Like you need the smallest amount of it. My forehead too, just above my eyebrows, just to give that a little bit of a sheen. Right here, kind of on the top of the bridge of my nose and in between my eyebrows, I like to pop a little bit as well. And any excess, I almost just like put it to the corner of my mouth. It's kind of like dust over and this kind of gives that overall dewy appearance without it looking crazy. Do you know what I mean? That is a little bit too intense for me. Hold on. Let me just, let me just fix that. Right. Is that better? I just fixed the brightness. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. So you see how it just has like a more dewy appearance. That's more realistic, this color in now. There you go. I just need to just fix play around with the camera. Before we do lips, let me just dust off any excess powder. And then I'm just gonna finish off my nose contour real quick, which is really simple. A little bit of Benefit Hula. And I just create like a little line right here. Go over any nose contour as well. That way I create like a little ball on the end of my nose. Where we put the sort of blush and the bronzer and everything. It fades out a bit, but I'm just making a bit more obvious lines to keep the shape. Highlight on the tip of my nose, and that is it. Lips, this is one of my favorite combinations. I feel like this just looks juicy. Lip liner, I kind of go between a few. Um, one of them, I really like the Dragon Beauty lip liners. Dragon Beauty lip job liner. I'm not sure on the colors of these two. It doesn't actually say, am I tripping or does that? I don't think it does, but the more brown toned ones, that is my favorite color of lip liner because I feel like it overlines your lips enough that when you put a lipstick on it sort of all blends in and fades but you still get that plumpness do you know what i mean these are great but i'm gonna just show my girl some love because i love her lip products so much kaylee little queen cash beauty lip combo here for you so i've got the lip liner which as we can see is well loved it is tiny <laughs> it's in the color rust nude this is beautiful if you're into that more sort of like darker almost like um what is it 80s 90s lip where it's like darker and then lighter in the middle this is the combo for you start off by overlining, as I normally do. Kind of like to fill in the lip a little bit as well. I feel like that helps with the blend. You know, like the corners of the lip. Finish off with her lipstick in the color Veil. This is beautiful. If you're into my type of nudes and you vibe with that, you'll love this. You'll be obsessed with this, watch it. Oh, how I... Is that not just the most perfect nude lip you've ever seen in your life? Pfft. <laughs> 
personally I've been enjoying it more matte at the moment but if I was going to put on a gloss her lip gloss cash beauty lip gloss is really lovely beauty bay do a really nice one in the color baby doll um dior i think it's in number 13 it's number 13 or 3 it's like a clear type of like nude tint gloss that is beautiful too more high end but it's worth it i'm trying to think what else they're like my top final little step i like to do i do this sometimes not always but i'm feeling it today so we're gonna go for it my brow you doing marker pen from misguided i like to add kind of two little faux freckles one kind of there and then one underneath this eye here. Sometimes I put a little one just above my eyebrow like that as well. Last but by no means least, a little bit of setting spray. I'm going back in with that Cinema Secrets one and we're just gonna drown in it. I wasn't joking. When you think you've had enough, add more. <laughs> Ladies and gents, that is it. That is my like go to glam. This is the glam that I will be wearing on June 21st when we can go out. Manifest it, okay? I feel like it's the perfect soft glam like it's not crazy and too much or hard to do but it's glam enough that we can like get excited about makeup again do you know what i mean guys this is it we are done i love this makeup look i actually feel like it being able to use some new products just products that i've been obsessed with it just re-sparks something in you okay if you haven't done makeup in a while just do it sit down and do it prepare practice get ready for the dates that we can leave the house and actually venture out and be humans again. As per usual, I have everything linked in the description box, all the products I use, as well as my shades of stuff. Thank you for watching.